This is my second update about the coronavirus pandemic and how it impacts people with diabetes. I will try to do these videos routinely as new information becomes available. However, because I know many patients as well as healthcare providers watch these videos, I first want to tell patients not to panic. I know these are unsettling times, but everyone needs to put in perspective the fact that most people, both younger and even older people, don't die from this disease. We all, healthcare providers and patients alike, need to practice the principles we are being taught from the CDC and other credible sources to prevent the spread of the virus. In terms of diabetes, the experts I know in the field recognize that we know far too little about the separate risk for people with diabetes distinct from the rest of the population. We all know that older people are at increased risk, particularly those with heart disease, but we don't know the additional risk that is conferred by having diabetes. In particular, we don't know the additional risk in a patient with well-controlled type 1 diabetes. It is my personal opinion that my patients with well-controlled type 1 diabetes are not at an increased risk for catching the novel coronavirus, or if they are, the increase in risk is small. What I do know is that managing type 1 diabetes during illness can be a challenge, and patients should be prepared with sick day rules, as I discussed in my last video. However, I do not think that my patients with well-controlled type 1 or type 2 diabetes are immunosuppressed. I think cardiovascular disease and other complications may increase risk, but I tell my patients to simply follow all the recommendations that are provided for everyone else. Now I'm going to tell you about three cases of patients with diabetes who had COVID-19 infection and how they did. The first case was published in the Journal of Thoracic Imaging and describes a 23-year-old male in Wuhan who had presumed type 1 diabetes and a glycated hemoglobin level of 14%. He was quite ill, was hospitalized, had extensive pulmonary disease, but did not require intubation, and even if with those very high glucose levels, he recovered. The second case is that of a colleague. The patient is a 77-year-old male with type 2 diabetes. His A1Cs have been in the high 7s. He has chronic kidney disease with an EGFR in the 40s, cardiovascular disease, and heart failure. He became ill very quickly with pulmonary symptoms. He was hospitalized and required intubation and dialysis, but has turned the corner and appears to be recovering. He received prompt, high-quality medical care. The final case is mine. It is of a 63-year-old male with well-controlled type 2 diabetes on semaglutide, empagliflozin, metformin, a statin, and an ARB. He had a stent in his LAD in the past, but no recent cardiac issues. When he developed symptoms of fever, cough, shortness of breath, and fatigue, he was tested and came back positive for the novel coronavirus. I stopped his empagliflozin since he is fairly lean, and I wanted to avoid any concerns about dehydration and DKA. He was hospitalized, but although he felt exhausted and slightly nauseated, his pulmonary symptoms did not worsen. His blood glucose levels were tested four times daily while in the hospital, and interestingly, he did not have any elevations in his glucose levels. In part, this was because he was eating less, but I was still surprised to see no obvious insulin resistance due to his fever and illness. He has subsequently been discharged and is doing well, although I am holding his semaglutide for now until he is eating more normally. Therefore, so far I am seeing what we expect, that most patients, even those at high risk, can be treated if treatment is available and the disease is recognized early. However, we know that we will lose some people to this virus no matter what we do, which is why people need to avoid exposure. On another note, physicians and patients should recognize that not every bit of published information should change what we do. There has been some data that ACE inhibitors and ARBs may make people more vulnerable to novel coronavirus infection, which has patients concerned. 
In speaking to experts, this is not definitively clinically documented and in all likelihood, these agents provide more benefit than harm. So I do not currently advise changing therapy for patients on these agents, although if more information becomes available, I will provide updates. My belief is that we can keep most of our patients with diabetes safe through this pandemic with kindness, comfort, and sound medical advice and prompt intensive care for those patients who are seriously ill. This has been Dr. Ann Peters for Medscape.